Hey everyone, I'm Terry, and today is the day that I'm going to drain the coolant from my car, as well as we're going to replace the water pump, the water pump pulley, as well as the drive belt, aka serpentine belt, and the air conditioning belt. So, let's get it! my friends so for those of you who have been following along my clutch fan broke and punctured my radiator so I'm doing a cooling uh, system upgrade um, my previous video I showed you how to remove the clutch fan now today I'm going to do the removal of the whatever coolant is still left in the car uh, we're gonna drain the rest out of the radiator whatever might be there if any as well as to get the rest out of the engine block and then I will go ahead and we will start taking off the belts and the pulley and the uh, water pump pulley and then the water pump. So let's get into there. So one of the first things you want to do, come over to the coolant reservoir, which is located on the driver's side of the car. And you'll see there's like a little bleeder valve right here. Go ahead and take a screwdriver and go ahead and uh, just pull that out. This is going to help release pressure to help flush all of that coolant out. Just make sure you don't lose these. Now these plastic little bleeder valves, they can break. If your Z3 has the reservoir tank attached to the radiator, some Z3s have that up, have it over here, you'll have your bleeder valve on that little tank reservoir right here on the radiator. I don't have that reservoir over there. I have this one here. So this is where my bleeder valve is located here. Now, these little bleeder valves are plastic, so they can break. There are brass ones, so that's an option. If you decide you don't want to deal with crummy plastic ones, you could upgrade to the brass. The next step is we're going to go underneath the car. I already got it jacked up. I got it on ramps as well as jack stands for extra safety. We're going to go under there. There's going to be a drain plug on the bottom of the radiator. It's going to be on the driver hand side. And then we're also going to have to take the drainage plug out of the engine block located on the passenger side. So let me go ahead and show you those. Now for the drain plug uh, on the radiator itself at the base, that's going to be, you can either use a, a screwdriver, it's going to be another, it's going to be the exact same kind of uh, plug that you have on the coolant reservoir. Uh, like the little, your little bleeder screw that I took out, it's the same thing. So you can either use a screwdriver if you've got one that'll fit between the hoses, or you can get a 13 millimeter uh, little wrench and uh, go ahead and you can take that one out. On um, the side of the engine block, on the passenger side, that drainage plug is going to be a six millimeter Torx bit, all right, or your Allen key, whatever you want to call it. All right, so that's what's going to be there. I've already did a pre-check. I have a 13 millimeter hex uh, standard uh, plug uh, on mine. So make sure you just take a look to see what you have in case somebody might have swapped yours out. Uh, so that's what I will be dealing with today. So let's get under there and do the messiest part. Make sure you have plenty of, uh, I got old rugs under the car. I got absorbent uh, like spill powder as well in case I need it to clean up any other messes because this will be messy. And I also have uh, my oil drain tray to because you're going to want a catch pan to try to get as much of the coolant as you can, especially if you're combing it at this with a full radiator and full cooling system of coolant. It's, you're going to have a lot more of a mess. Most of my coolant already leaked out, so I'm still going to have a mess, but it shouldn't be as bad. So just keep that in mind. And also make sure you wear uh, eye protection. You don't want to get any antifreeze in your eyes because when you're under there, it's going to get everywhere. You're going to get it on you. It's inevitable. All right? So let's get it. All right. Once you're under the car, take a quick look. You can see even though most of my coolant has gotten out, now that I've jacked up my car, it's starting to leak again. I have a feeling it's leaking from my water pump because when I wanted to take the clutch fan off, it was bent sideways. So, I'll, yeah, I'm pretty sure most of my coolant drained out via my water pump. So I still got some of that coming out. And it is dirty, but it is blue. That's another thing to keep an eye on. Uh, 
BMWs run on blue coolant. So at least I know this is the proper coolant uh, that is in here. So make sure you don't have like red or something else. So this is more than likely was possibly the BMW coolant if they had it serviced with the dealer. But uh, all right, well anyways, if you go to the base of your radiator, this is the driver's side of the car. You'll see right here is your little drain plug. You can see you can get a screwdriver in there if you want. You got some of these lines here that might make it difficult unless you have a short one. Or like I said, you can do a 13 millimeter. And so I got my little handy little tool here. That's the first mess. Go ahead and let that fully drain out. And then, once it's all done draining, go ahead and put your drain plug right back in. All right, so we'll let that drain, and then uh, let's get set up to get the one out of the passenger side right over here. All right, so if you look, again, this is the passenger side. So right on the engine block, right up here. Make sure, of course, you're doing this when your engine's cold. <laughs> Uh, is your drain plug right there. Like I said, you should have a 6 millimeter hex bit in yours. I have the 13 millimeter hex on mine. Alright, this is almost done draining out. Also take note that the drain plug that goes on the bottom actually has this uh, serrated looking washer on it. So that's how you'll be able to tell the difference between the bottom and the top one. All right, I went ahead and put the drain plug back in over on that side. Make sure you do not over tighten that. It is plastic. You will break it. So be careful if you plan on keeping this whole radiator and all that. You don't want to be breaking that. All right, meanwhile, back over here on the passenger side. Once again, we're going to get out this drain plug here. And this one is the messiest one uh, to do. So make sure you have your escape route planned. So you don't take a shower and get because this will come right at your face. So uh, eye protection and have your escape plan to back yourself out from underneath the car as quickly as you can. You can see where it's located. I'm not going to show you. I can't have the camera under here uh, while I take that one out just because my camera will get completely drowned. So I don't want to drown my camera. So just note that that's where it is. All right. So I already went ahead and got it loosened off camera. I haven't pulled it out yet. You will run into an issue where you're going to be kind of up against your exhaust, making it a little bit more difficult. So I actually had to use a very long extension and a wobble tool to get past it enough to break it loose. And then now I'll be able to go in there with a sh just a short extension to get it the rest of the way. But it was just, I had to really finagle to get clearance away from the exhaust just to break it, uh, break it loose because it was really tight. So... Now I'm going to go under there with just the regular little extension and actually get the drain out. So this is the messy part. I've removed, I put my camera further back and I pulled my spotlight out so that way I don't get that all wet. So let's get messy. There will be a washer on this drain plug if you have the original. Try not to lose it. It's going to be a lot of pressure. It's going to shoot out your drain plug. If you don't can't keep a hold of it, it's going to end up flying who knows where. I'm trying to get ready to get out. Ugh. All right, now this would have been a lot worse had my system been full and I didn't already have a lot of it leak out. This would have been far worse, but not too bad for getting it all out of here. It sucks too because I did a thorough cleaning underneath my end, underneath the undercarriage of the car after doing all my fixing all my oil leaks, and now I have to do it again because I got all this coolant on everything. And that stuff doesn't smell good when it starts to burn, so 
your work is never done. <laughs> All right, but uh, it's kind of dark up there because I had to take the lighting out, but uh, the plug's out. So, yeah, they just got this nice plug here, and it's got the crush washer still on it. So I didn't lose the crush washer, so mine's good to put back in. All right, so I went ahead and I found that after more trial and error to make it easier for you all to figure out so you don't have to troubleshoot as much as I did. <laughs> uh, it was really difficult for me to get the drain plug off the engine block initially because I was using a 3 8 socket wrench with extensions. I had to use a wobble. It was just, it was just too big and clunky and there wasn't enough room uh, to torque. So... After going through that, when it came to putting it back on, I went and I got my small little uh, quarter inch socket wrench with a real short extension. And that gave me a lot more room because this is so much uh, thinner than my uh, <laughs> than my bulky, it's a, it's, you know what I mean? So again, it gives me more room. <laughs> so I highly recommend then to do the quarter inch. Uh, that made it a lot easier for me to get the drain plug back on. And the drain plug is torqued at 25 newton meters. That translates to about almost 18 and a half pound feet. So now you know how to do that. Now it is recommended to replace that drain plug. Uh, now some models are going to have the hex drain plug like I did. I, uh, it's common on both four cylinder and six cylinder engines. And some models will have the six millimeter torque spit plug in there so it really depends on the models Went into my owner's manual because I like to write my torque specs down and they actually had the previous owner actually had the diagram uh, that they printed out on the, how to put the drive belt uh, properly in so that tells me that they've already you know they've done the cooling at some point because my plug was brand new uh, and they've replaced at least the belts at some point so there's also a good chance that they were already doing that much there's they I would figure if they were already in there doing that much there's a good chance they may have already upgraded that water pump to a metal impeller pump and they might have swapped out that pulley uh, I noticed when I was taking the clutch fan off that that pulley didn't seem like plastic but it was really hard to tell because uh, it was kind of tight there. So I want to kind of take that off and find out um, if they had upgraded to it. Now, like I said, that clutch fan, it was bent uh, when I was taking it off. And then draining the coolant just now, uh, I could see that it was still leaking. So I'm thinking when the fan hit the radiator, it bent it, which then inadvertently bent the water pump. And so all it's, that's where the, the, my leak came from, essentially. My radiator did has damage in it, no doubt, but it didn't leak anywhere from the radiator. It was definitely from the water pump itself. So let's dig in there and find out what they've done. And if they did do the upgrade, that's just sad because the, the previous owner did all the work, the you know, the preventative maintenance, but they forgot to do the fan. And so all that preventative maintenance get, got destroyed because they did it. To the fan <laughs> so let's find out I'm kind of curious to see if it was upgraded or not so let's get it all right so the next step then is we want to get the water pump pulley loose we don't want to fully remove the uh, bolts that are holding it in we want to just get it loose to get started then we'll start loosening the belt next otherwise if you take all that off you're gonna have a hard time like it's just they're just gonna spin on you so we just want to get them loose. So if you look down here. All right, so right here is the water pump pulley. So there's four of these on here. Like I said, they're 10 millimeter. Don't fully remove these, just break them loose. And since this has been serviced before, these are actually very, very loose already. So I'm literally already got these broke free with very little effort. Wow. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, my service has been definitely been done by the previous owner. So you can see they're loose. Don't take them off. Just you know, get it to where they're you know to where you can get them off with your hand. All right. And then once those are nice and loose, you're gonna have um, your little plastic dust cap. 
on your tensioner right here. And then there's another one for the AC down here. Now, if you're only if you're not replacing your belts and you're just doing the water pump service, you do not have to mess with the AC one at all. You'll just loosen the tensioner to pull the belt off loose. So you get the pulley off and replace the water pump. Since my belt got shaved off when it you know with the fan breaking, I am gonna have to take both of these belts off and I'm gonna replace them today. So if you just have a small screwdriver or a little pry bar, just try to pop that little plastic cap off. Right, there's one, and my angle isn't very good. I'm going to get it from below. It'll be right down here. And there, now that's off. So yeah, they're just these little plastic little dust caps. So... Both of those are removed. All right, so I tried my six millimeter little Torx uh, socket on there, and it had a little bit of play, so it's probably more of a six point five. Now my kit doesn't have a doesn't have a six point five, uh, so the next best thing is to get a quarter inch. So right there, I got the quarter inch. That actually fits much more snug than the six. Uh, so that would be your best bet. So you go ahead and you're going to use that. Now I'm going to need to get my 3 8 uh, wrench because this one is gonna, not going to be strong enough for that kind of tension. So let me go ahead and upgrade. You're going to push as hard as you can to the right. And what's going to do is that's going to relieve the tension on here so you can get the belt off. Just to slip this part off. Now I'm going to need both hands and I can't do this with the camera right in front of me. But that's what you want to do. You want to pull this to your right, and then this pulley, your tensioner pulley, is going to slowly back back uh, back off and release tension, and then you'll be able to slip the belt off of that part. All right. So I went ahead and I pushed down as hard as I could. That got that tensioner to pull to the left, and then I was able to slip the belt. I was able to slip the belt off right here, just like that. And then that comes undone. Now you can't fully pull it off because it's behind the AC compressor belt. So I have to take that off to fully change this. But if you're just, like I said, if you're just doing the service for the water pump, you just got to get it loose like this. Finish taking off the pulley, pull out your pump, and then you're good to go. And then put everything back in and then put your belt back on. But uh, I got to replace these belts, so that's one. Let me go underneath the car so I can uh, loosen the tensioner for the AC compressor and pull this belt off. All right, now that I'm back under the car. Get that back on. Now I'm actually using my breaker bar because it's built for, you know, for things with higher torque. So that way I won't have to worry about breaking my uh, socket wrench. But then again, I just pull down. Like that, much easier from under the car. <laughs> that loosens up that tensioner. And then you can just slip off that belt, just like that. And then that one will come right off. And then let that go back up. Now, there is a pin you can put in to keep the tensioner down. You can pin it in. But uh, I'm not worried about it. That's an option. And then we can pull off this belt. All right, you guys, so both of the belts have been removed. The AC compressor belt actually looks like it's in really good shape yet, so technically I wouldn't have to replace this belt. Excuse me. Technically I wouldn't have to replace that belt, but since I have to replace my drive belt, it's good for me just to do both. So if you look at the drive belt, but it's got that jagged edge right there. That's where the fan kind of strips some of that off. So this had to get replaced. So it's always good. If you have to replace one of the belts, you literally have to take them both off. If you're, if you're doing the drive belt, you have to take off the AC compressor belt. So you might as well just replace them both at the same time. They're inexpensive parts. Uh, here, I got two uh, Continental belts from uh, Auto House AZ. Here's the part number for the AC compressor belt. And then here is your information for the drive belt. 
So you can go ahead and pick these up. Like I said, these are inexpensive. All right, that being said, next up is to remove the water pump pulley. Now I bought this one because I had expected there to be the OEM plastic one on there. It's the Euro parts, there's the part number. It's the aluminum water pump pulley. This does have a warranty. I also got this from Auto House AZ. You should always get replacement bolts for your pulley because when you're doing the service on your water pump, your bolts for the pulley as well as your water pump will always be really, really uh, rusted out usually. So it's good to just replace those so you don't have to deal with rusted bolts. So, and then if you want to get some of those, there's the part number for that right there. And this is for the pulley itself. This has the bolts. Your water pump sits on studs, and you'll just have nuts that you'll take off, and then you slide it all back off of the studs. Let's go ahead and get that pulley off, and I'll show you. All right, so back to the pulley. Once again, we had already loosened these, so I can take these off. Just finger tight, and they got little washers on them. All right, now all those are off. Now just slip off the pulley they all got bent and everything so mine doesn't want to come off well, there we go and then there's the pulley all right so it's a good thing i have a new pulley so Take a look at this one. It's all chopped up. This one got damaged. So, plastic. So, we're going to go ahead and replace this one. Good thing I got the nice aluminum one. Because, uh, yeah, this definitely got chopped up quite, quite a bit. So, garbage. All right, so you can see where my damage happened. So, this here should not have any play. This is the part the clutch fan gets on. You see all that play? This got completely busted when my clutch fan broke. So, no good. So, there's four nuts that are on the pump itself. So, we got to get them off. Now, a tip is it will be much easier to get to this. If, if you're servicing your thermostat, it would be easier to take your thermostat off and get your hoses out of the way. Or at least maybe, you know what I mean? Like, so if you were to remove your thermostat first during this maintenance, if you're switching everything out, I would do that. I would, I would do the thermostat first and then so you can get to this easier. But for the sake of this video, because uh, I wanted to do the belts and everything, it makes more sense to do the belts with this. So I'm going to do mine in reverse. So it might be a little harder for me to get it off, but it's still doable. But I just know, the, remove the thermostat first if you're replacing both. All right, and the nuts that are holding the water pump on, those are 10 millimeter as well. With my little quarter inch socket wrench, I got plenty of room, so this the hose isn't getting in my way, but if you don't have a quarter inch, like a small little quarter inch, and you have the 3 8 wrench, you might run into some clearance issues with the upper radiator hose. Sometimes you just need smaller tools. And I'm using the longer, a longer 10 millimeter as well, so I won't have to deal with extensions. And this water pump has definitely been serviced before because these nuts are also not very tight. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed and I keep hitting the camera. But these should, would normally be much tighter because they would be rusted on. But, uh, yeah, not too bad for, for me. So let's see if I can get those off by, by hand now. Make sure you have your catch pan directly underneath because some more fluid could potentially come out when you remove this water pump. Yeah, you just like I said, you just got little 10 millimeter little flange hex nuts on there. Don't lose those. Yeah, 
do one more. All right, and now you just slide it off of the studs. And since mine got bent, mine might be more of a pain in the rear. Let me go get my pry bar to kind of slide it away from the engine. All right, so I'm having difficulty getting it off. So I'm starting to take the upper hose off. So you have a little connector that goes right here on your thermostat. You just got to push this piece in and then that'll pull up. Now this is zip tied on. I'm going to break it later, but for right now, I just kind of want to slip this off. The catch pan is down there. You pull, you take a little hook tool, and you'll, this will be in like that. There's a little gap right here. Put your hook tool in there, and then you pull that out, and then you can start to slide off the upper radiator hose. So I'm going to take this off so I can have some more room to kind of get in there. All right, so I went ahead and I moved, removed the upper radiator hose. I just tucked it down over here. And then the lower radiator hose, I also unhooked and I just tucked it over here so it's out of my way. So now I have a little bit more clearance to maybe try to pry this off. But uh, like, like I had said, removing the thermostat is your best bet at doing this. But I want to try to keep it on because I am going to replace this, but I don't feel like doing it today. I was going to save that for another day. So let's, uh, let's keep trying to get this off those studs. All right, I pried it enough. There we go. That came out. <sighs> All right, let's inspect this water pump here. Nope, they never upgraded it. It looks like the previous owner, the previous owner at some point replaced the coolant and replaced the belts. They kept the original pulley on and they kept the original composite impeller on. Uh, you can see the plastic here got shaved up pretty bad right here. And I don't know how well you could tell on camera, but it's this the spindle that the impeller sits on is bent. So garbage. <laughs> so though. No, We'll go ahead and we'll get rid of this impeller and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put on our new nice metal impeller that we got. Let me go ahead and show you what one I, uh, I'm going with. This one is the OEM composite one. So, junk! Alright friends, we went ahead and got that water pump out. It was the original composite water pump. So. I had really thought that since that was loose that maybe the other owners had already done the maintenance and upgraded it, but they didn't. They took off the plastic pulley and put it back on. <sighs> That's okay. We're going ahead and we fixed that problem. So let's get this new stuff in. So we got this. I got my new impeller right here. This one is, uh, I got this from Summit Racing. It's really good quality little metal impeller here. And this is the Beck and... Arnley, I'm, I struggle with that pronouncing it, Beck and Arnley uh, brand one. It is made in Germany. Uh, it's really good quality. I'm, I'm happy with it. There's, when it comes to the water pumps for the Z3, you got your composite ones. Lots of different manufacturers make that. Those are going to be bottom of the barrel, in my opinion, when it comes to the quality. And then you got your cheaper metal impellers that are probably about $30. Uh, I had originally gotten one of those and I uh, ended up sending it back because I'll, I'll post a picture, but it just looked like a really bad refurbishment job on there. And I did not trust putting that in there. <laughs> it looked like it was kind of dented. It had like really bad spot welds on it. And I was like, this, this is a hack job. So I sent that back and then I switched over to Summit Racing and they had this one from Beck. And uh, so I went ahead and got this one. This one costs a little bit more. And then uh, so that's really good quality right there. And then the best one you can get is a Stewart water pump. Now, if it's in your budget, I would recommend that everybody get the Stewart water pump. It's going to last you the lifetime of the vehicle. It's, it's the best one. It cools the best, and it's going to be able to handle 
uh, intense driving conditions. So if you live in the mountains and you're going on those twisty roads, or if you are doing autocross, drifting, any kind of motorsport, it's going to be able to hold up to all of that, you know, abuse. So that is the end all be all. That costs about, I think, $185. So since I have to do all of these repairs all at one time and it was not, I wasn't ready to do it yet, it's not in my budget to get the Stewart pump right now. So I went ahead and got the Spec and Arnley one. And I'm happy with it. This will do the trick. I'm not doing autocross or anything like that at the moment. That's just my daily driver. So this will do just fine. If I get to the point where I'm ready to do autocross, I can always upgrade to the Stewart water pump if I so choose. But I'm not anywhere close to doing that. i got to change my suspension and all that stuff out first if I want to go to autocross level. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this new uh, water pump uh, put in. And I also got the aluminum uh, pulley to replace that chipped up composite one that was originally on the vehicle. So that's getting fixed today. So let's get these on. Now when you go to install your water pump, first things first is you have this, uh, your, your little O-ring right here. You're going to want to put a little bit of lubricant on there. You know, if you have a little oil laying around, put a small amount on there. You don't got to go crazy or anything. Just real lightly oil it or you can use uh, your antifreeze or what, just put something on there to give it a little bit of slip so you can insert this in and get past that new o-ring so make sure you do that also when it comes to putting it in you'll see that your bolt holes are have a different lineup orientation so it will only match up one way and the way to best tell is for, for for me is the top has this fat lip above it whereas the bottom is more straight so that's the easiest way for me to tell top and bottom always you can look at the bolt orientation that one the little one in the middle is further down and on the right side it's further up Whatever works for you. So let's go ahead and slip this bad boy in. Let me get it lubed up. Before you insert your new pump, make sure the inside of the of this bore here, where it's going to sit in, is nice and clean. This can get a lot of uh, antifreeze, like caked on, like calcium looking, like deposits on here. It can also get rusty. So you want to make sure you have this really nice and clean. Uh, so that way you know you're going to have a good seal so you don't have any leaks. So mine is actually pretty clean. I will do a little bit of wipe down. I do have a little bit of gunk here, but mine is impressively uh, real clean. So we should be good to go on that front. So let me just give it a quick little, little wipe down with a soft scour pad. And uh, I'll go ahead and slip that in. I already put a little bit of oil on the O-ring. So I'm just about ready. All right, let's go ahead and slip this new one in place. Line it up on those studs. And then the hardest part is pushing it past that O-ring. It's going to take some uh, muscle, but uh, just work on trying to get that past that O-ring the best you can. Because right now, I can't thread the nuts on, so I might need a little bit more lubricant, but try your best to push that in. All right, after you get it pushed in enough to where the o-ring goes in you can start threading on your nuts i got this bottom one here started and the bottom one on the other side started i just wanted to make sure it wouldn't slip back off the studs so let me get the rest of these nuts on all right and then we'll tighten them down I'm going to do a crisscross pattern to ensure that it keeps the O-ring seated in there as uh, straight as I can get it. And let's try to make this a little tighter than what it was for me taking it off because I want to make sure it's good. Not too tight though because this is aluminum. I don't want to crack it, but a little bit on that one. I don't want to do too much at first. I just want to make sure this thing is able to seat on there properly
All right, we should be good. That seems tight. I don't want to overdo it. Like I said, don't overdo it. It is aluminum. Just want to make sure it's good and snug. It's already tighter than what it was when I took the other one off. So that should be good. Now, after you get your belt back on, you could, if you're installing a new clutch fan, you would just, you know, put it right back here. If you're doing a delete like I am, if you want to protect the threads on here, there is a fan delete knot you can order. I'll post the part number on the screen that you can thread on there. And it'll help keep these threads clean so that way down the road, if you decide you want to go back to a clutch fan, these threads will still be in pristine condition for you to do that. So I don't have that yet. I'll order it later. But uh, just take note that you can put that on there. All right. Water pump is assembled. Next step, let's get that pulley on. All right, I went ahead and I had to back out all of the bolts because I had it on the wrong angle, so they weren't lining up. So I took them all out, readjusted it, and then they all went in quite easily. So just make sure they're lined up right. Uh, so they're all finger tight. I'm not going to be able to torque them down until I get the tension on it with the belt. So that's the next step. So remember, the drive belt has to go on before your air uh, before your AC uh, compressor belt because that goes in the front of it so let's go get the drive belt and put that on now you can also replace your tensioners if you notice that maybe the bearings are going out these will get really loud once the bearings start to get out but mine still sound real good so I'm not going to change my uh, tensioners right now so I should be good for that all right and here is the diagram to show you how the drive belt goes on all right so i got the belt sitting on top of the pulley here i got it going around right here go straight down and under this one here and then around the pulley in the back this one here is for the ac compressor belt so go to the one behind it and then you got to kind of loop it in like that because then we're going to pull this tensioner back and then slip this little loop piece over this tensioner. Bad news, friends. While I was putting pressure on the tensioner so I could slip the belt over, my adapter snapped off inside my bit <laughs> into my socket here. So I am now... Out of business. I'll have to go to the hardware store and uh, try to find another quarter inch bit. Sad day. Alright you guys, it's day two on the project that we were doing here with the water pump and the replacement of the belts. I had to call it because as you guys saw, my adapter for my 3H drive to a quarter inch drive, it snapped off in my hex bit socket so and it was already hot so I said you know what to heck with it I'll just continue in the morning when it's cooler so I packed it up for the day so we're back I went to Lowe's this morning got a new adapter which I'm not going to use today but I just wanted to make sure I replaced the part that I broke so if I do need it for another project I'm good to go and I got a new um, quarter inch uh, hex socket hex bit socket and this one is a 3 8 drive so this will work better so I won't have to worry about my little adapter snapping off again on the tensioner. It just unfortunately the kit that I had for my, uh, my hex bit socket kit, the only quarter inch uh, bit that they had was the quarter inch drive. So that's what led me, in th that, that set me up for failure. <laughs> so now we're prepared. So you know, now you know that this happened. If your hex bit socket, if your quarter inch hex bit socket is a quarter inch drive, just go to the hardware store and get yourself a 3 8 drive to save yourself the frustration because those little quarter inch little adapters, they can't handle that much tension that the tension is going to be put on it. So just, just get a better socket, uh, uh, you know, just get the bigger socket. All right, so I'm back in business. Let's get those belts on. All right, let's get it. All right, so we got to get the belt on and make sure the ribs 
are going down on top of here. Then I got to loop it, so you got to kind of pull get it to loop. Try to get it seated in there the best you can. Try and pull and get as much of the slack off as you can because you're going to need every little bit of this belt. All right, so now the belt is in position. It's just a matter of pulling the tensioner back to slip this over. Make sure it's seated well on the pulleys below, and then release some tension. And then I'll come check it from above. And you just want to make sure that it's fully seated properly on all of the pulleys. Because if it's off just a little bit, when it spins, it could slip. And it looks like, and, I'm, and from feeling, it's completely on. All right, now that the drive belt is properly installed, do not forget to put your plastic dust cap back on that tensioner pulley. And just snap that on. All right, that one's done. Next up is we get the AC compressor belt on, and that one's going to be a lot easier. All right, now if your car is not jacked up, it may be... A little more difficult to reach far enough down to do the AC compressor belt so it would be recommended to still have your car lifted if possible that way it'll bring it up higher so if you need to reach down you can reach it a lot better and this way if you need to make any adjustments it's easy to get to it from underneath the car as well so let's go ahead and this one just is a quick little slip over goes over the pulley on the left Make sure your rib side right here is down because that has to go into these grooves. Just like that. And uh, then we're just going to mess with that tensioner. All right. And in case you uh, need a visual diagram to kind of help you out, we, now that we got the drive belt on, we go ahead and this here is the AC compressor belt. It just slips over here, and then we just got to pull this tensioner so that way we can actually have the belt loop over the top of the tensioner. Actually helps if I remember I have to have the belt on the opposite side. So here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of pre-start it, kind of like that. This way my tool isn't in the way of the belt. And then just make sure once all the tension's removed from the belt, you slip it on the pulleys, make sure it's properly seated once again, and then you can release tension on the pulley. 
feel around, make sure it's good on top. And it looks like it's seated, right? All right, and there we have it. Now we just got to put that little dust cap on. And that'll just snap in place. And that's all you have to do. Now we have the drive belt and the AC compressor belt replaced. It's that easy, folks. Also, one more thing before I forget. After you get your belts on, do not forget to tighten the four bolts in your water pump pulley. Remember, those are only finger tight. So, tighten those up. All right, and there you have it. We have been successful at replacing the damaged water pump. We got the new aluminum water pump pulley installed and brand new drive belt and AC compressor belt. So this is, you know, part two completed uh, in my project so far. So I hope this helps you out. Be sure to hit that subscribe and the notification bell so that way you don't miss out on the next part of this project. I'm going to get started right away, but I'm gonna have it on a separate video where I'm gonna show you how to replace your thermostat. So I will see you guys on the next video, so don't miss out of it. And also don't forget to check me out on Instagram at CoolCatTerry. And don't forget, let's get it. I'll see you then.